Greetings and salutations. So we are on to part two of our project management lecture series. And in part two, we cover drawing the project network. Here again, we have our list of activities for the shopping center project. In the first column, we have our activities listed from A to I. In the second column, we have the description of these activities. In the third column, we have our immediate predecessors. And immediate predecessors are activities that must be completed before we can begin an activity. Or immediately before we begin an activity. So, you will note that activities A and B have no immediate predecessors. That means, as soon as we are ready to start this project, both activities A and B can commence right at the beginning of the project. For activity C, it cannot begin until we have completed activity A. Likewise for activities D and E. So activities C, D and E. These three activities cannot commence until activity A has been completed. Activity F cannot commence until we have completed activity E. For activity G, before we can commence activity G, we must have completed both activities D and F. Activity H cannot commence until we have completed both activities B and C. And finally, activity I cannot commence until we have completed both activities G and H. The final column is our, gives our expected times, which we calculated in the first video, part one of the lecture series. So here we go, we be, we're beginning the network. We noted already that since activities A and B do not have immediate predecessors, they can begin right at the start of the project. So here we have them, activities A and B, starting our network diagram. Uh, you will note that this is our node, activity node. And you'll notice that there are six compartments. Now, at the top, we have the, the top of the, the node, we have the earliest start time, earliest finish time. At the bottom, we have the latest start time and the latest finish time. In the middle, we have the activity and the expected time. For the purposes of this video, we'll only be completing the activity and expected time compartments of the node. The other nodes will be covered in later videos. So you will note that the project network requires a single starting point. So since we had both activities A and B just hanging in at the start of the network, we introduce what we call a dummy start node. And the purpose of this dummy start node is just to create that single unique starting point for a project. Right. You'll notice now that for activity C, D, and E, they immediately follow activity A. So that's what we have shown here. You'll also notice the order that I do not have activity C at the top, I have it at the bottom. And there's a reason for that. Looking at further down in the column, we notice that activities B and C together form immediate predecessors for activity H. Which means it's nice to have activities B and C fairly close together to avoid crossing lines in our network. Now, we prefer not to have crossing lines, but in some cases they are unavoidable. So while we try to avoid them, to have a neat looking diagram, there are times when they are unavoidable and we just have to have our lines crossing. The next activity is F. And you'll notice that F immediately follows E. Then we have G, and G has two, two immediate predecessors, 
activity D and activity F. So we're going to have arrows going from activity D and activity F to activity G. Next we have activity H and it has two predecessors, activities B and C. So it means we'll have one arrow coming from activity C and another coming from activity B and both arrows will be going to activity H. Last but not least, we have activity I, which immediately follows activity G and activity H. So of course, we'll have arrows coming from both activity G and activity H to activity I. Now, since the project is ending at a single point, which is activity I, we do not need a dummy end node. The dummy end node is only needed when we do not have that single ending point. If we had multiple activities at the end, instead of this single ending point, then we would have needed to create a dummy end node for all the activities to culminate at that dummy end node. But in this case, all activities culminate on activity I. So you'll see the project network, fun to draw, should be neat. And once you've got it done, once you've practiced, you realize that it's fairly easy. So we just ask you to keep practicing until you achieve perfection. And perfection is simply lots of little things done well for an end point. In our next video, we will cover what we call the forward pass. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe, walk good, and talk to you again soon.